this episode of Travelog, we're heading to a well-known southern city. We'll peel away the cool cosmopolitan exterior and find deep-rooted traditions and a proud heritage. So, where are we going? Find out next. Welcome to Southeast China. But where exactly am I? I'm in the most popular city in Zhejiang province, home to many of China's self-made millionaires. And business is booming. But you can buy practically all the luxury brands in the world here. Skyscrapers, mountains, rivers and ocean. And rustic, centuries-old villages. This place has everything, and my mission is to find out why. This is one of the liveliest cities in China, but it's also home to many cultural relics that have all but disappeared in this country. Along our way, we'll meet the enterprising people that symbolize what this city really stands for. So where am I? I'm in Rinzhou. Welcome to Travel Odd so, let's get this show on the road. Located in the south of Zhejiang province, Wenzhou is a comfortable two and a half hour flight from Beijing. Be prepared for sunny climbs and straight talking people. If you're in Wenzhou, you have to come here to Wumai Street because this entire street has been the cultural and commercial centre of Wenzhou for over a thousand years and almost all of the shops here are locally owned. Some of which actually have made it abroad. Rent here is astronomically high, but if you have a shop front here, it means you've really made it big in the world. You smell that? The smell of business. Wenzhou entrepreneurs are so successful, they've been called the Jews of the East and many of them have literally gone from rags to riches. In fact, you'll find many villages in Wenzhou dedicated to making just one small thing. A button, a pen, or perhaps a lighter. It's not an easy road to walk, but the signs of success can be seen all over the streets of Wenzhou today. I'm here to meet Mr. Junk, the first Chinese shoemaker to open stores abroad and one of Wenzhou's first generation of entrepreneurs. I want to know the secrets of his success. It's hard to believe this tiny kitchen spawned more than 2,600 stores in China and 200 more worldwide. In fact, Mr. Zheng gave up a cushy job in a state-owned company to start his shoemaking business. His strong will and tenacity are traits shared by all Wenzhou's entrepreneurs. And when he only had a few hundred yuan in his pocket, it was his wife who pulled him through. <laughs> The baton has now been passed to Mr. Zheng's children, members of the second generation of Wenzhou entrepreneurs. But it's not always easy for them either. So we 
，而且我觉得不单单是康奈的第二代，还有温州许许多多的第二代。其实，在我们光鲜亮丽的背后，我们付出了非常非常大的这个心血去工作、去学习。作为二代，这不仅仅是一个财富，它也是一个精神财富。所以我们希望说，去好好的去延续它，去发展它，成为它自己更大的财富。我想这也是父辈们所希望看到的，也会是他们那种光荣，跟他们那种骄傲。Budding entrepreneurs take note. And if that wasn't enough, now we're going to see another with Joe's success story. Whoa! This is an absolutely massive lobby. I thought this was a five-star hotel, but it's not. Actually, everyone in Mundro eats seafood, but there's a huge difference between eating and fine dining. And I'll let you in on a secret. Some people, for their wedding, have to wait an entire year to make a booking here, and that's not a lie. But uh, if you're a normal customer, you can walk straight in. Ah, don't you remember? It looks palatial now, but this restaurant, Amaylon, started life as a 20 square meter snack shop. 30 years later, it's now the best known seafood restaurant in Manjol. But get this, the owner still gets up at 3 a.m. every day to buy the seafood from the market. It's his way of ensuring his restaurant always uses the freshest ingredients and maintains the highest standards. I don't think normally I can get to live a life like this, but uh, when you have rich friends, then maybe you get to live a life of luxury. 欢迎来到温州，今天呢特别安排了几个菜。第一道菜呢就是我们的主食炒粉干。先上主食是为什么的呀？因为我们中国的文化都是要先喝酒，所以说我们一定要先吃点主食垫垫肚子，免得在喝酒的时候我们才不会伤到胃。这个呢是金平黄鱼，我们温州这一边哈，我们重要的宴席上面这是必不可少的一道菜肴，尤其是婚宴。那我看咱们美食也上了这个是什么东西啊？哦，这个是酱骨醋，因为温州是主要食于海鲜为主、嗯，所以为了配合我们的海鲜的一个鲜度，所以我们这是我们特制的一种调料。I think it's it's fantastic. You know, you got to come to Wenzhou, and of course you have to have friends like these. But、uh, enough talking for now. I think. Cheers to that. Cheers. cheers. The night has just begun. Time to let our hair down. Thanks to Wenzhou's all-year-round mild climate, it's no wonder why everyone looks so summery. And once you've finished with retail therapy, why not hit one of Wenzhou's mega clubs, where all the rich and beautiful come out to play? Work hard, play hard. That's the mantra here. Just make sure not to spend all your hard-earned money in one night. Coming up next, we'll indulge our inner glutton on some local delicacies, tease our brains with a tricky tongue twister, and put on our best dress for a night at the opera. In this episode of Travelog, we're heading to a well-known southern city. We'll peel away the cool cosmopolitan exterior and find deep-rooted traditions and a proud heritage. So, where are we going? Find out next. It's early in the morning, but for many Wendell citizens, the day has already begun. I find it amazing how people here even approach leisure time with the same amount of gusto as they do business. Thanks to Wendell's many lakes and rivers, dragon boating is popular here. These guys are preparing for an upcoming competition. Such determination. If all that ruins giving you quite an appetite, head to this restaurant for a refueling breakfast. They've been around for over 80 years, and like the other entrepreneurs, had a humble beginning. 
The founder used to walk the streets to sell his food. Hey, you're good. This is what you're doing. This is the founder. I've heard of this place. That那个皮和皮和皮的人不一样。这个皮，它是黄的，比打的时候我们这个牛肉干给做的还强，很辛苦的。呃，把这个红蓝打，要手打。呃，我们就可以放在这个皮里面，皮下来一定要薄一点。
I guess I'm starting to understand how Benjo people operate. Tradition isn't sacrificed for modernity. Once the focus of the romance of poetry, Jiang Xinyu is now the focus of a different kind of romance. Instead of immortalizing words, people now come here to immortalize themselves. You can do the same. Cheese. Did I mention they have free Wi-Fi here? And suddenly, the entire world is here to see Travelog. The sun's about to set, but our cultural day out isn't finished yet. Time to head back to town to enjoy the local nightlife. And I have a VIP pass. I'm going to be uh, very honest. I don't know much about Chinese opera. I've only ever really heard about Peking opera. But we've been invited backstage to check out Ouju, which is Hanzhou opera. And it's an intangible cultural heritage, so it'll be fun to have a look. <笑>这个今天咱们是演什么角色呀 你为什么开始学这个偶像啊? 从古时候开始,欧奥普拉是现在最受欢迎的中国传统的偶像剧。Everything is sung in the local dialect, so I have no idea what's being said. But, as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. Coming up next, it's all in the arms as we learn to make paper the 700-year-old way. Literally soak in our surrounding and pay a visit to the bridges of Taishan County. Hollywood, eat your heart out. Under its modern exterior, Wenzhou is steeped in tradition, and that's why I'm heading to Zuya Town in Ohai District, an hour's drive from the city centre. Throughout history, mankind has always built settlements near water. It's a source of life and of power. Here in Zeya's Sulandui area, water was also a source of income. Originally built in the Ming Dynasty some 700 years ago, this area once flourished with paper mills. Today it's a scenic spot, but we only have to head into town to see how the paper making tradition is being kept alive. Everyone knows the Chinese invented paper, which is one of the four greatest inventions of mankind and uh, it makes me a bit proud to be Chinese. But we've come to this village because it's famous for paper making. And uh, I won't bore you with all 109 details, but the quick run through is that the villagers go up to the top of the hills and they cut down the bamboo. And then they come down over here and stick them in these pools of water for about seven months until the bamboo goes uh, soft and a bit rotten. 
and uh, start smelling a bit bad actually. But then, through the magic of water flowing downhill, they have this mill over there with a hammer attached to it, and they place the bamboo underneath, which turns it into mush. But the amazing thing is, this village has retained the same kind of paper making skill as they had 700 years ago. So let's go witness how the magic happens. Hey, Neha, what funny is that, Kayma? What the other? <laughs> no, he's right. You need to wear a hard hat for this kind of thing. Oh, that beard up. This paper is used for rituals, and a 4,000 sheet stack of paper sells for just $10. With so little reward, most of the youngsters have left for the city. Only the elderly remain to continue this age old trade. And you see this cookie dough texture? In order to get it compressed like this, Oh, you do what the French do. It's like stepping into a vat of really cold um, powder dung or so. And you do this for God knows how long until it becomes all compressed and you can use it as paper. <laughs> Feet are really cold right now. But the final process is that uh, this lovely lady is going to let me give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not paper, but I, I think I think it's a nice painting. You know, it looks a bit like the Vendral landscape. You've got mountains there. You've got, you've got some clouds somewhere. <laughs> On the other side of the mountain, it's a very different story. I'm heading to Taishun County, a two and a half hour drive from Zuya, and worlds apart. Who'd have thought it? A luxury hotel in the mountains. Here, it's water in the form of hot springs that brings in the money. This is the perfect spot for businessmen and tourists like myself to indulge in a bit of well-deserved R&R. With all the different hot spring and spa treatments here, you'll definitely be spoiled for choice. Of course you can run a bath in your room, but there's no fun in that. You've got to come out here in the open where you're in the mountains and you've got the hot spring here and I can't wait. But uh, a lot of people come here because there's a special chemical in there called radon, which is originally uh, radioactive, but when it enters the water it gains curative effects. So you, it's good for arthritis, people with arthritis with skin problems, and uh, it's one of the biggest attractions here in Taishan. Oh man, it feels amazing. If this was at night, and you had like the stars in the sky, and you could see the mountains, that'd be perfect. Those with weak stomachs, turn away now. Maybe there is something to this rad on hot spring, because I feel completely rejuvenated. This is the life. Our journey is nearly at an end, but we still have one more stop to make. Just 30 minutes drive away is the reason why Taishun County is famous in certain circles. It's covered bridges. Taishun originally had more than 900 bridges. These days, it has over a dozen nationally protected covered bridges, more than anywhere else in China. This bridge, the Beijian Bridge, is the best known. Incredibly, following the rules of traditional Chinese architecture, not a single nail was used in its construction. Everything simply slotted into place. And you say, Taishun, why do you have so many lines? Because Taishun is a place where there are three. Three are very, very high. So the road is very high. I must admit, the bridges do add another dimension of beauty to this place.
，风水是财富。同时，这里有这个两个桥，两边呢都可以作为商业上的经营的地方。还有一个呢，就是叫它是啊，是一个休闲活动的地方。哎，躲风避雨啊，挑担子在这里歇歇地方，这些都是歇歇歇歇担子的地方。那就完全能能感觉到原来这个，原来咱们这儿肯定很繁华，好多人都坐在这儿，然后呢，对，是啊，你过过去呢，这里就一个休息。Through hard work and industriousness, the people of Wenzhou have built their city into what it is today. This spirit of hard work is evident in the bridges of yesteryear, and in the successful businesses of the modern entrepreneurs. Their secret to success is simple. Whether in business, life, or leisure, always give 100%. You know, I think Wenzhou is a place of contrast. On one hand, it's incredibly modern, and there's the spirits of entrepreneurship everywhere. But on the other, it's all about respecting its roots. Whether that's grassroots opera, paper making, or 300-year-old bridges that are still intact today. But I think it all boils down to one point in the end. Vindral people are really hardworking, and that's the spirit that keeps this place alive. I'm Turan. Thank you for watching Travelog, and I hope to see you next time.